Hi, Emery. I want to try something here and see if it works. I'm going to make a little video uh, talking because I can talk faster than I can type. And then I'll put it on an attachment to an email and hopefully it goes, gets to you. I wanted to let you know, first of all, how much I really enjoy being a part of your service every Sunday. 3.30 Sunday afternoon is our time here. And uh, I always do my best to be in front of my computer watching and participating in your service. Uh, I find your, your sermons and your teachings to be really good and inspirational and informative. And uh, it really makes me feel closer to you because you are one of my oldest and dearest friends. And uh, I'm glad you're still preaching. It gives me a chance to really spend time with you. You talked about the Trinity yesterday. And it's a, it's a really difficult topic in a lot of places. Let's face it. Uh, one thing that makes it difficult, as you know, everything I'm telling you here, you already know, is the word Trinity is not in the Bible. We talk about God, we talk about the Father, we talk about the Son, we talk about Jesus, and we talk about the Holy Spirit. And in many verses in the Hebrew Scriptures, Elohim and, and so forth, and God says, let us uh, make man in our image, let us go down to the Tower of Babel and, and uh, confuse them. And the word Elohim, in the beginning God, in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth, which is Hebrew, masculine, plural. In other words, it could have been translated, in the beginning they created the heavens and the earth. So let's get back on to the Trinity. That It's not in the Bible. Some things that have evolved in Orthodox Christianity... Uh, I think we've strayed from the scriptures because we, we believe a certain thing and then when we're challenged, we dig in our heels. For example, Christians are accused of worshiping more than one God. Some non-Christians will turn to Christians and they'll say, you guys worship three gods. And we're quick to jump on the defensive and say, no, we don't. We worship one God. You know, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. We worship one God. Okay, let's look at this a little further. Where else does the Bible use the word one? God tells Adam and Eve, a man will leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. They shall become one. And I don't think the Lord is talking about a sexual act of becoming one through sex. I think he's saying a man and a woman become husband and wife and they become one. They're a spiritual oneness. They're still two separate individuals. I've done weddings and I'm sure you have too where they've had a unity candle. A candle, in fact, the mother of the groom lights one candle, the mother of the bride lights the other candle. There's a part of the service where they take this candle and unite it. Two become one. Sometimes the original candle's blown out to show that they are now one. Other times the other candle is lit to be symbolic of the fact that they're still two individual people, and together they're a family, they're a husband and wife oneness of the unity candle, but the other two remain. Anyway, what I'm getting at is the husband and wife are still two individual people. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, I believe, are three individual people. The Father is God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Father is 100% God. The Son, 100% God. The Holy Spirit, 100% God. You want to accuse me of worshiping three gods? Okay, I do. I worship God the Father, and I worship God the Son, I worship God the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm all confused. Who do I pray to? Don't worry, they'll sort it out. <laughs> That's what I tell people. Don't worry, they'll sort it out. Anne has always been taught about God. She said since, since she met me, it's all about Jesus. Well, who's Jesus? 
I thought he was just his son. I said, he's also God Almighty. Jesus, you know, laid down his life on the cross. It was his to give up. Now, let me tell you something real quick. One difference uh, between Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and you see this in people's lives. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. Pentecostals really stress the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, because the power, the power of the Spirit to, to, to give us uh, resistance over temptation. We're able to overcome sin because of the power of the Holy Spirit. So people looking for power gravitate to the Holy Spirit. People like me, uh, I'm an amateur intellectual. <laughs> I really love to study the Word, and the Word became flesh, dwelt among us. Jesus is the Word of God, and the Bible is the Word of God. They're both the Word of God. And, and yet, I'll, I'll, we love the way Jesus would outsmart people. When he was on the earth, they would come to him with puzzles and questions, and he would always outsmart them. And boy, that really, I really want to outsmart the enemy, you know? And so people that are into wisdom and into knowledge, they're into Jesus. Oh, I really want to study Jesus. I really like to look at his words. I call on Jesus to give me wisdom to deal with this situation. Holy Spirit's power. Jesus' wisdom. Who's the Father? It's the Father that loves you. For God, the Father, so loved the world, he sent his only begotten Son. The Father sent Jesus. Now this gets me into my next point. And this is where I get controversial. I believe the Father is superior to Jesus. They're not equal. It's not Father, Son, Holy Spirit equal. I believe the Father has authority over the He sent Jesus to the earth. You know, and, and Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father doing. Jesus said, I am in submission to my Father. God the Father is superior in heaven. That doesn't detract the fact that Jesus is 100% God and we can worship Jesus with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we also worship the Father with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And Jesus then said, I've got to go away because I am going to send the Comforter. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. So Father is superior to Jesus. Jesus is superior to the Holy Spirit. That's not to say the Holy Spirit's like third best. No, they're all 100% God. They're all to be worshiped. But in the hierarchy of heaven, the Father is superior to Jesus. Jesus is superior to the Holy Spirit. All three are vastly su su superior to everything else in the creation because they are the only creators. Father, Son, Holy Spirit are the creators. They created us, they created angels, they created the world, they created everything. So they are vastly superior, but in the realm of heaven itself, Father, then the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. Anyway, love to be able to talk about this with you, because I'm sure you've got questions. Please tell me where you disagree, because I want to learn, and together we can really learn. I appreciate you, brother. I'm going to try to uh, put this now in my computer and see if I can uh, send it to you as an attachment. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, see you soon, I hope.